Hello and welcome back to another video. So in this one we're going to look at Joe 90 Top Secret Annual, which is dated 1969. So presumably it's from Christmas 1969 to 1970. So there was, I think you could get a Joe 90 TV series annual, and a Joe 90 Top Secret, and Top Secret was a, a comic. Uh, unfortunately I don't have any. That's uh, Stuart Damon, I think, on the left from the Champions TV series, if anyone remembers that. And again, the price there is 12 shillings and sixpence, which wasn't cheap at the time. OK, so we've got some nice, bright, colourful artwork, which you'd expect for the period. And of course, the good thing about comic books is, is that you can do explosions very cheaply. Now, the other observation I can make about this strip is, is that I think the heads are a bit weirdly flat on top on some of them. All the bad guys have got flat heads. Now this is a piece about training police dogs. Now it doesn't say where or for who, um, but it just seems like a slightly more vicious uh, Barbara Woodhouse episode. Okay, now we have a strip for the champions. A lovely photo of Alexandra Bastido. Now to me the champions never seem to really be about anything other than a bit of spying and, and foiling of Banana Republic plots etc. Um, it always seems incredibly glamorous. Okay there's a page of bad jokes which even I as a small child I probably found these disappointing. Ah football, something I never really got I have to admit. And now I'm a grown-up, I'm allowed to say it. I don't get football. Now this is something you have to agree is a bit weird. It's basically a story of ninepence and tenpence, right? Who are two, or well, we would say Inuit boys, uh, but they're very definitely called Eskimos in this. Um, and so basically they play football. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird. And they do swimming and stuff and have adventures. Now this is something I wasn't into either, was uh, stamp collecting, but obviously it was a really big thing. Um, and that's something I think has changed with time. Now I should add that uh, I, I was actually into collecting postcards, so there you go, I'm a nerd. Now apparently when they started doing Star Trek cartoons, it was about six months between them starting to make the cartoons and Star Trek actually being broadcast. So a lot of the artists only had a picture of the Enterprise and the cast. They may not have had any other ideas about what the show was about. So things like the shuttles, right, do not look like the shuttles you know and love from Star Trek. Because basically the artists drawing this had never seen the shuttles. So you'll get all kinds of strange takes on what the shuttles look like. Now, I think in the very earliest comics that were done by TV21, um, the shuttles are actually just like repurposed uh, Thunderbird 2s. So there you go, that's a bit of a crossover between um, Thunderbirds and Star Trek for you. In fact, on this page, you can actually see uh, something else which they didn't get right, having not seen it, presumably. So if we like go and look in the top right corner. So McCoy would never have gone with a white box with a red cross in it, because he never did that, that I'm aware of. And also there's no colour coding of the uniforms, etc. So it's like really it's almost as though someone's not seen Star Trek, has drawn Star Trek, they've just seen stills. You'll also notice that I think down in the one corner of the page there's another type of shuttle used by the Enterprise. So it's, it's all very confusing. You can tell that it's actually got Enterprise written right. Okay, and here we have a Joe 90 story. Now on the right, we've got some things for magic tricks, uh, making an electrostatic generator, etc. So, um, and then that is followed by more really bad jokes. So we won't go there.
Now, who remembers Land of the Giants? Now, weirdly, I never really got into it. It was one of those things that if it was on, I would watch it, but I wasn't particularly passionate about it. Okay, now we have a cartoon strip about Malcolm Campbell. Now, as we all know, the, his attempt on the water speed record ended in tragedy. Okay, so some more on stamps. Unfortunately, it's going to be nerd alert because I'm going to have a little talk about dinosaurs. So there you go. So you got Stegosaurus, Tyrannosaurus. You notice how like a Tyrannosaurus that was standing with his tail dragging on the ground. And this is like how dinosaurs used to be perceived. Now we know or believe that they would walk with their tail sticking out behind them, like an armored fish. Early reptiles or was it early amphibians? I always get confused on that one. Okay. Okay, so here we have Brontosaurus, the dinosaur that didn't exist. So basically, if, uh, during the 1880s, there was something going on called the Bone Wars, where it was two men in America were basically effectively going to war with each other, trying to name and discover new dinosaurs. So one of them, uh, named Apatosaurus, and then the other guy found a dinosaur, and he named it Brontosaurus. And then come around about 1900, 19, just before the First World War, uh, another paleontologist looked at his findings and went, no, that is not a Brontosaurus, that's actually an Apatosaurus. And so Brontosaurus ceased to exist, because really it was an Apatosaurus. But everyone still knows of Brontosaurus, or at least they think they do, but it's the dinosaur that doesn't exist. Anyway, when you get up to about uh, very recent, like 2015, 2018, something like that, someone did some new research and decided actually Brontosaurus is a different dinosaur. And so Brontosaurus was alive again. So it's one of the few dinosaurs that can be said it went extinct, was resurrected, went extinct, and was resurrected. And again, you'll see how all these animals are displayed with their tails dragging on the floor, which they don't believe now would ever have happened. So the way these are all represented has changed quite drastically. So anyway, nerd alert over. So anyway, that's stamps. Very exciting. Okay, so we have another champion story set somewhere abroad. And look at that, so a bit of violence there. So he's, he's able to wrestle a man to the ground and not get his, not in his tie messed up, and she's ready with the gun. Now Joe 90 is supposed to be set in something like 2012, 2013. And so basically, I want to know why we haven't all got flying cars by now. I find this very disappointing. Great colourful artwork. Again, explosions are cheap on, in the print. <laughs> Okay, so there's another sort of strange mix of adventure and sport with this ninepence and tenpence story where the two in Inuit lads are going to be playing for England against Germany whilst at the same time doing a bit of espionage. It was the 60s, that's all I can say. Okay, and there's a, a little quiz on Star Trek. So I hope you're paying attention. I don't give you the answers. You've got to, you've got to read this. <laughs> well, I mean, the answers are next to the questions. So, <laughs> so it's not it's a very hard quiz, it has to be said. But I bet you someone still gets under five. Now we have a few pages on American uh, flight, pioneers, etc. It's got the Wright brothers, Spirit of St. Louis, etc. B-52. Who would have thought the B-52s would still be flying? And also making great records. Sorry, it's a cheap joke. Um, and yes, the lucky L-2000. That's going to be like a sort of American Concord. Well, that never happened. Obviously then, they thought it might. So there you go. Okay, and lastly, we have another Land of the Giants story. And 
bright colour. It's going to be closer than think, we'll take it away. And there's an explosion, there's always an explosion. Okay, then you have Joe 90 there with Big Rat and uh, Star Trek. Alright, and obviously Saturn V on the back there. So that is the 1969 Joe 90 Top Secret Annual. Well, I hope you found that interesting. And uh, if you did, leave a like, comment, please subscribe. I'm going to beg there, aren't I? Okay, see you next time, guys.